Hi there, this is David, and welcome back to Little Space Saga 3. Today, I am in the Underworld, and we're going to be going into the Western Towers. It's uh, quite strange. It's red and blue and kind of weird looking. But anyway, uh, this place can be rather annoying and rather difficult. And you've, if you look at the ceiling, you can see like some treasures and stuff kind of on the ceiling. So, yeah. Now, if you remember, some guy in Mazuma said that you should not push the blue switches here. So, leave that switch alone. There will be switches that we will uh, push in here, but not the blue ones. Anyway, head over here. What do we have? Ooh, a laser gun. Nice. Not that I'll be using it because I don't have cyborgs, but anyway. Uh, yeah, there's another treasure on the ceiling. I wonder how it possibly was to get those. Well, we can get this firestone right here, so that's pretty okay, I guess. So yeah, there are blue switches in here and there are red switches. Do not hit the blue switches. Only hit the red switches. So we're going to move over into the uh, other tower right here. Just use this little tunnel. And uh, first things first, I want to head over here. Because uh, you pretty much want to um, explore and loot the red tower first uh, before moving on into the blue tower. So now that I've gotten that, Let's head over here and hit this switch. Yeah, totally push it. Whoa! Whoa, what the hell? What's going on? It's like reverse gravity. Yeah. The, uh, the gimmick in this tower, which makes it pretty much the most annoying dungeon in the game, is that um, you have to explore I, uh, the floor and the ceiling of it. I mean, it... It pretty much is a like a reverse gravity tower. Um, so as you went and you saw those various treasures on the ceiling, you get it by, you know, hitting those switches. So over here we have, ooh, a flash fist. Not that I'll be using that because I have better stuff. Oh, there's a treasure right there, huh? Yeah, maybe I should go back and hit that switch and um, get that treasure. I seem to have missed one. Um, if you don't want to hit the switch, then you don't have to. Uh, but it might be advisable. But first, let's go ahead and loot this place. Go over here, and we get another treasure. What do we have? Oh, a blaze tomb. Okay. Well, that makes all four of the various magical tombs that we have now found, although you could have bought them a long time ago. But anyway, uh, now I want to go back and hit that switch to get that treasure chest that I saw on the roof over there. If you don't want to push the switch, you don't have to, because I'm about to go through a lot of grief for a high potion. Yeah. You heard me right, viewers. I'm doing all this for a measly, stinking, who the hell gives a damn, high potion. This place is annoying as hell. I cannot stand it. Anyway, uh, right here there is an exit, so if you wanted to leave this place, you could. Um, I don't want to, because then you have to start all over again. And there actually is... Um, a somewhat important item that you want to grab here. Ooh, wow, I'm scouting people left and right here. Uh, let's see, keep on moving. This place is, for the most part, optional. You really don't have to come here if you don't want to. Um, but if you want the ultimate weapons and the ultimate armors, the ultimate equipment, all that kind of stuff, then yeah, you're going to have to come here. And you know, you might as well because we're going to need the extra levels because these guys, they are really hounding you. They're really chasing you down. And they're getting a bit more difficult. I mean, each hit is dealing about 100 to 200 damage, uh, depending on the enemy and depending on, you know, the attack type, if they're doing magic or physical or whatever it is that they're doing to you. So, yeah, uh, you want to be on your guard. I'm still not going to show random encounters, though, because you can still flare everything to death. Once you can't flare everything to death, like in the final dungeon, then I'll go back to showing the random encounters. But for right now, um, they're still flareable, and easily, easily, easily dis uh, dispatched. So we're almost through with here, thank God. Um, ooh, excavation. What do we have right here? Oh, a guillotine. Um, that's kind of morbid. Whoa! <laughs> Every single enemy in that entire room is chasing me. And this is the treasure that we were looking for, finally! And what do we have? Ooh, the Mirror of Wisdom. Nice! So I'm going to use a teleporter and get the hell out of here. Thank God. Ugh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, head back to the northern staircase, head up it, go back to the overworld, go into Goat, and uh, meet you at the Barrier Ruins. Okay, I'm at the Barrier Ruins up top in Goat, so let's 
dive right on in. I mean, we have two really obnoxious dungeons to go through, so we might as well hit them both in the same day. Um, I am going to be doing both dungeons, actually, if I didn't say so earlier, in post-commentary, because, my god, the encounters in here are just through the roof. It's just insane how many uh, encounters there are, and if you kind of like just like you know, lollygag around and kind of wait and look around and explore the map, then the monsters will respawn and it can really just drive you batshit crazy. So, you want to go through here quickly and know exactly what you're doing with little to no backtracking so that you don't have to deal with any of these monsters. By the way, I was thinking about these stones. There seems to be a lot more stones in the DS version of this game than in the uh, Game Boy version, and I believe that the reason for that is because in the Game Boy version, there was no durability counters. Whenever you bought a weapon, um, it it just stayed. It didn't um, degenerate over time like it did in Saga 1 and Saga 2, or Final Fantasy Legend 1 and 2. Um, so, you know, once you had your weapon, it was permanent. However, in the DS version, that isn't the case, except for Easy Mode, which I'm totally playing on. Um, so if you're playing on normal or hard or whatever, then yeah, you're going to need the stones because, um, you know, your your flare books or your weapons or whatever it is that you're using um, are going to, um, you know, not, not be around. So from here, um, if you notice, there is a treasure chest over in the uh, bottom left-hand corner, and we can't get to it quite yet, and we're not going to be using that stairwell right there either. So what we need to do is actually go back to the first floor. So, yeah, we gotta refight these monsters and re, you know, do our way all the way back down there, which is extraordinarily annoying, but, eh, it is what it is. Um, you can't progress through here just using stairwells. Uh, they have to make it as tricky as humanly possible and not show pitfalls on the map, because that's how you progress in this dungeon, is by falling through uh, holes to get to the next area. So you fall through here. And let's see, go over this way, and what do we have? We have the Dragon Wrist, which is not as good as our Genji armlet, so don't even worry about it. It's, um, it's a uh, one-step downgrade from that. Over here, we have another Dragon Wrist! Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't want it the first time, I definitely don't want it this time. So, let's head over to uh, this area over here, and see what we got going on. Let's see. Uh -oh. Okay, we got a dark stone, and we bypassed the uh, previous pitfall that we wanted to go down um, last time. So just head on back, and here's the next pitfall to go to the next floor. Okay, here we have a treasure chest in the um, upper corner, as well as a stairwell over there. That stairwell will bring you back to uh, the previous floor. It was a stairwell that we didn't take earlier, so I don't want to deal with that right now. Just go there, grab, grab that magic source, I'll use it off screen. Hey, hey! I'm scouting like a madman today. That's pretty nice. I wish I could scout more. It's really hard to scout. And then you want to use this uh, rightmost stairwell to uh, progress with the dungeon. We'll get that other treasure over there that we can't get to right now. We'll get it eh, in a minute or so. So another uh, complicated floor. So first things first, uh, I want to go down to the, uh, I guess it's the uh, rightmost middle stairwell to uh, go down to the previous floor and grab the treasure that we saw last time but we couldn't actually um, get. So go in here, and there's not a monster shown on the mini-map, but one comes up anyway because, you know, the game won't let you go for more than five frickin' seconds without a damn random battle. It's, it's really ridiculous. So keep on moving and grooving right along. Now I want to go to the uh, upper right and grab that... Uh, okay or not, and I'm not going back through to get that freaking ex excavation treasure, yeah. Like I said, I'm doing this in post-commentary, and I saw it in commentary, I totally forgot about it in the game, and I'm not worried about it in the slightest. It's probably just a stone, or a teleporter, or a potion, something that I'm not going to use, unless it's a source. Pretty much that's the only thing that I want, or sources. Everything else I'm getting just because, but I really don't care. So you get the teleporter there, and now we want to head over to the stairwell on the left turn, or the, the leftmost side of the uh, dungeon, because then we'll head down to the fifth floor, 
where the boss awaits us. So go on down there, and I'm gonna heal up Sharon off-screen uh, before we make it over to this boss. This should be the room where the barrier generator is installed. Yeah, and it looks like Volvox is here too. Yeah, that looks like him. Wow. Try to keep Volvox distracted, please. Will you do that? I'll set the explosives on the generator. Got it. Just be careful, okay? Sure thing. Okay, well, we lost Dior. But next time, we will fight Volvox himself! This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.